Um, today, of course, is our potluck. Who's ready for some great food? <laughs> I am too. So at noon, we're going to have our potluck downstairs. And then next Sunday, we have a treat that's going to be our Christmas cantata, which I am very, very much looking forward to. I've heard wonderful things about your Christmas cantata, and I'm very much looking forward to that. And then, um, just uh, for future reference, just so you can mark your calendars, on uh, Sunday, or Saturday, sorry, Saturday, December 24th, you are invited to a nativity walk at the Ballista United Methodist Church. It starts at 4, and we're going to have a display of nativities. So I'm not sure how many we have, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be over 50. So um, nativities throughout the, the church, and so you're welcome to come to that. And then, of course, our uh, Christmas Eve service will be at 5 o'clock here at the church. Um, and that nativity walk is going until midnight, so you have plenty of time to go to Ballista, um and to our service um, here at 5. And then on December 25th, Christmas Day, we will have pajamas, cocoa, and carols on December 25th at 9 o'clock. Appropriate pajamas, please. Um, but uh, anyway, just so you're for your future reference for that. And now I would like to call Julie, if you would come up and give your announcement, that would be great. Is that my mom? I believe it is. Because I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I can be really loud. <laughs> I have kids at school and I'm coming and they're like, why are you yelling? I'm like, I'm not even close to yelling. I just can project. Well, I wanted to give you a little bit of update about what we're doing with the youth. We have a small but mighty group, so that gives us a lot of freedom to do a lot of fun things. So we've gone like on movie nights together, and we've come to my house and just had hangout nights or watch movies together. We get to go do a lot of fun things. But last week when we met, I said I really would like to look at doing some kind of service project for Christmas. So we talked about different ideas, and the one that thing that we settled on was going to the nursing homes and making gift bags for all the residents at both nursing homes here in Red Oak. So this Wednesday when we meet, we're going to put those bags together. So what I'm here today is to ask for donations. We're looking for people that would like to help put forth maybe some of our candy, um, our, what I, when I called, they actually gave me some ideas and I talked to some things. Candy needs to be sugar free because some of the residents can't have sugar. So we make sure that any candy that we put in the sack is sugar free. Uh, we're also asking for small packages of Kleenexes, you know, the little, the ones that, are, that you, you like them with your kids in their backpack or whatever, the small ones where you put in your purse. That way, if they're uh, traveling around in the nursing home, they can keep one, you know, with themselves if they need Kleenexes. Um, mechanical pencils is another thing that, that we discussed and they thought that was a great idea. You know, we talked about there's really cute pencils at Christmas time that you have to have a pencil sharpener for those and that might be kind of a, a hardship for somebody to find a pencil sharpener if their pencil breaks. So mechanical pencils kind of tend to work better. Uh, we also thought about um, little bows and maybe raffia that we can staple or, or attach to the sack to kind of spruce them up to make them look really festive. Uh, I went upstairs and we didn't have some paper sacks upstairs, so Sunday school teachers, I borrowed, well actually I took them, I really not going to borrow them, but I won't be bringing them back, but I did take those so that we could use them up, I don't know if they had a use, but some of that stuff up there is left for years and years, but I thought, maybe I could use those up, I do need 25 more small paper sacks. Uh, we're also going to try and put together some ornaments, I bought some beads the other day, I have lots of bike cleaners at my house, so we're going to maybe make some ornaments, and then we could also use uh, Christmas cards that we can uh, sign the inside that just says from your friends from the First United Methodist Church, you know, we wish you a very, very Christmas. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun putting those together, and we're going to do that this coming Wednesday to set up. They're coming out to my place, we're going to throw a movie in, I don't know if we might watch the Grinch, who knows? <laughs> but we'll watch a movie, we'll put these sacks together and have them all ready to deliver them on the 14th. So then the 14th, we will go to both nursing homes and then deliver those packages to every resident. So if you, uh, if it's upon your heart and you would like to help with that project, please let me know. I'll stay around a little bit after church here, after church service. And um, you can talk with me about that. If you have any other suggestions that, that might go great in sacks, let me know because we'd be glad to stuff them sacks with 
with anything that we can, but if you have any questions, please just look me up after service, okay? Thanks. Thank you, Julie. And now let's turn our attention to our century video this morning.
Oh my goodness. <coughs> I might need my reading glasses. You might be challenging me here. You want mine? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's on the screen, oh, praise God. <laughs> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come it to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes. Praise God. Well, in his book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Dr. Seuss never tells us why the Grinch hates the Who's and Christmas so much. Some more recent movie adaptations of the book have explored the reason about why uh, the Grinch would hate Christmas and the Who's so much. But perhaps we can look at this in a different way. Perhaps the fuss that the Who's make over Christmas isn't without some criticism. Perhaps the Grinch is right in his aggravation over the grandiose decorations, the seemingly um, uh, glutinous um, amount of food that they are eating, and the never-ending singing. When the Grinch stands outside his cave on Mount Crepus, he isn't bothered that the Coos are expressing their faith and reaching out in concern and service and thanksgiving for God's gift for the Christ child. He is upright, uh, uptight, sorry, uptight about the mythical wreaths, about the noisy toys and the never-ending feasting and the incessant singing. Perhaps we, like the Who's, can get wrapped up in the decorations and the food and the gifts instead of what the true meaning of Christmas really is. I'm going to take this down here. <laughs> As I have been decorating my house this week and preparing the food for you all next Saturday, this has become very relevant in my life as I have tubs and tubs and tubs of decorations and it makes me wonder, could my heart need some growing as well during this season? In his book, The Heart That Grew Three Sizes, author Matt Rowell writes, he says, even when something looks like Christmas, we have to judge whether the Christmas story is really present. It happens the opposite way too. Sometimes things don't appear to have anything to do with Christmas at all, but the Christmas story is definitely at the heart. Once again this week, we find ourselves with a scripture reading that doesn't exactly appear or sound very Christmassy. As we hear Isaiah prophesy of the exiled, uh, the exiled Israelites returning to Jerusalem. It says, Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. And it isn't until the last verse of today's reading that things sound a bit familiar as the prophet declares, a multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Median and Epha, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Now when we hear these familiar words from Isaiah, it immediately brings up images from the Christmas narrative in the second chapter of Matthew, which we just read, of the wise man coming from the east to see Jesus. It says, they fell to their knees and honored him, and they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, I'll be honest with you. I am very particular and fond of the story of the three wise men, and typically, I don't like to even bring up the three wise men until after Christmas, because, of course, we know that we celebrate Epiphany, which is, is when the... Um, wise men actually show up and worship Jesus, okay? So it's going to be held on January 8th. And so 
it took me on my comfort zone, quite honestly, to even bring up the three wise men um, before their special recognition. But it is an important aspect of the story that will help us understand the peace that Jesus' birth brought to the world. As prophecies and scriptures often do, this connection between Isaiah's prophecy and the wise man from Matthew goes much deeper than just us placing a tiny Christmas bow on this scripture. You see, many scholars believe that the wise men from the east came from the area of Babylon, where the Israelites, when Isaiah is written, their Babylon. Enemy. Babylon, right? <clears throat> Babylon was their enemy, right? Oh. They're not happy that they're in Babylon. Hmm, interesting. So the very same Babylon that has oppressed and exiled Israel during the time that Isaiah was written. At the heart of this scripture is the promise of hope and peace to come. Not just for the Israelites that will return to their homeland, but also for the forgiveness of Babylon. The forgiveness of a nation. That's what this is telling us. The wise men bowing to Christ is a beautiful and a biblical way to reveal that in Christ, even Babylon can be forgiven. Isn't that beautiful? That these three wise men came from the east, which was likely Babylon, and they were redeemed. The whole nation was redeemed because of Christ's birth. Through the birth of Jesus, Babylon, Babylon is reconciled with God, and that is downright Christmassy. Not because we recognize the word gold and frankincense, but because we are reminded of the peace and the hope that we see revealed in the Advent season a peace and a hope that are deeply intertwined. The prophecy from Isaiah is about the hope to come. At that time, at the time that Isaiah was written, the Israelites felt, felt scattered and they felt alone, but the prophet tells them that hope is coming in which they will see the day that their nation will be restored. And in that restoration comes peace, not just for them, but for all nations. This is a beautiful image, but there is also messiness with it, isn't there? It's messy because when we are in conflict, when the Babylonians have driven you out of your home and into exile, the idea of peace with them doesn't sound so great, does it? It doesn't sound super appealing. When we think about the future of our enemies, we want to see a day when they are brought down. Right? When they are brought down by a warrior king who comes riding in with a mighty army. Not a day when they are healed by a carpenter and a handful of fishermen who speak about a kingdom that has room for all and enough for all. Yes, even our enemies. See, peace is messy. It can be a little uncomfortable. But it is beautiful. I am reminded of a story of World War II survivor Corey Ten Boom. Years after being held captive at Ravensbrook, at Ravensbrook concentration camp, she was at a speaking engagement telling of God's forgiveness. Afterwards, the man who Corey recognized as a guard from Ravensbrook approached her and told her that he had become a Christian and that he knew God had forgiven him of all the cruel things that he had done. With his hand stretched out to her, he proceeded to ask for me, Will you forgive me? It was, without a doubt, one of the hardest things that Corey had to do. But she knew that God required her to forgive in order for her to experience peace. And so with a silent prayer to Jesus, asking him to help her. She thrust her hand into the one stretched out to her and was reconciled with her enemy. Now, her brother in Christ. In Isaiah, we are told that the coming Messiah will be known as the Prince of Peace. This holy peace is a true reconciliation between God 
and humanity, and neighbor to neighbor. It is being at peace with oneself even when all the toys have been put away and the decorations removed. That is the kind of peace that Jesus comes to bring, and it goes far deeper and involves far more than the usual trappings of Christmas. See, this kind of peace is something that the Grinch cannot feel. It's the peace that prompted the Who's to sing on Christmas Day, even when their Christmas traditions were taken away. Peace is a prophecy that propels the forgiveness of those with whom we are in conflict with. Peace is a dirty, smelly manger where a baby swaddled in cloth will one day change the world. Peace is a heart that grows three sizes and seeks mutual forgiveness. Beloved, peace may not look like anything that we expect. It may not come in the way that we desire or the way that we think it should. So as we continue on in the Advent season, as we light the candles of hope and peace to illuminate the dark night, let us heed the words of the prophet Isaiah. He says, Lift up our eyes and look around. For beloved children of God, peace is at hand. Amen. We stand with us as we sing We Three Kings, number 254. Now we'll have a time of prayers of the people. I have on my list. 
we are um, still praying for Kyle Stanley, for Dwayne and Kathy Harris, for Jeanette Zawaski, and Fred Trumbull. Are there any other prayer requests or joy that you would like to share this week?
expository prayer. Gracious God, you, you offer us a gift beyond the beyond Your Son, son invites the sweet kiss of rain, rain on the bare land. land. Your, Your promised salvation is like the bread of heaven for those who are perishing. In gratitude for your abundant gifts, we bring before you this day a person that you have so generously given to us, the occasion of the day of your will being done. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for communion today, we are going to be taking it a little bit differently. Is this now working? Maybe not. Test, test, test. delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant 
by water, and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples. And he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, 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 our Father,